Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning to the people from uh, joining us from the Zoom, from the YouTube. How is everyone doing today? Did everyone have a good weekend? Good morning. Good morning, Ion, Vasilena, Deol, Isaac. Okay. Just to double check, guys, uh, can you just see this rectangle I'm drawing on the screen? Please type a quick yes so we can start. Okay, fantastic. Now, as you know that this uh, webinar is to go through the markets, to review what's going on with, uh, with the currencies, it has nothing to do with personal advice. All right, so you can seek your financial advisors for any financial advice you are looking. Now, let's start with the weekly high impact news events. And first and foremost, we have to say that uh, currently today, some of the major European European um, firms, uh, central banks, they're going to be closed because of the with Monday we have in Europe. Okay, so we, we're we going to say that we not expect too much of volatility in the euro currency. The focus of this week, by the way, guys, because this is the first Monday I'm doing the webinar. Uh, I start last week on Wednesday. So just to know, every Monday I'm going through the major weekly news events so we can get just an idea of what can create volatility in the market which days especially it's important for intraday traders okay and if we know that some currencies uh, they may sit on support on resistance based on the the upcoming news events we can just make a bit of summary in our head of what we expect to be happening we can just plan some of our uh trading around it so uh on tuesday tomorrow we will expect the reverse bank of australia to influence and increase their interest rate from 0.35 percent to take them to 0.6 percent and of course as everyone understands <clears throat> we will expect to see uh, a bit of high volatility in the in the uh, australian dollar now when we're going to go to the charts, you will see that some Australian, um, some Aussie currencies, Aussie pairs, they are sitting somewhere around resistance. So if this is going to move uh, ahead and they're going to increase the interest rates, most likely we're going to see uh, some breakout, some good breaks out. Okay. So we will see that in the chart later on. Uh, on Thursday, we have the European Central Bank, they're going to decide about the interest rates. So we expect to have volatility on the euro as well. Okay, this mainly on the major news events, but however, we're going to go through also uh, on Wednesday and uh, on, on Friday again. All right. Now, let's me, let me share the MetaTrader platform and let's go to review the pairs. Just give me a sec. Okay. So, as you realize, we first start with the uh, pound USD. What do we see here? We talked last week that we came from that long-term downtrend. Now the market make an equal high here. It didn't manage to break the last week to break through to show us a clear trend to the upside. Uh, it's been three days, it's hovering around, around this area, around 1.247. So, uh, and you will see that this is a common behavior uh, on the Euro as well. So it's like going sideways for, for us, the candlestick traders. We see this uh, as a mother candle, 
and here we have a triangle formation, usually a breakthrough this triangle formation, it's uh, with a good amount of volatility, so it gives a powerful breakout, okay, if we can say that. So this, for me, guys, I'm just sitting on the sidelines with this pair because really it doesn't give any clear direction of where can I place my uh, uh, my money on this one? For example, if we go to the four hour chart, we see that if you recall, we said up, we said that we had this trend line, then the market made a lower low. It struggled around the support to make to push lower. All the uh, the move got reversed now. It reversed here at around this support. If it's if it's gonna break through and it's gonna make a new higher high, or if it's gonna come just somewhere here and then it's gonna push lower, nobody knows. Okay, just be mindful that last week on Friday, you remember if you were on this uh, webinar, we said about the interest rates in, uh, uh, sorry, we said about the non-far payroll number, that if it's gonna come down to the expectations, then we will, definitely experience some um, weak USD, which is gonna help the rest of the currencies to, to have a lift higher. However, the number K, uh, very, very close to the expect, ex expected uh, number. However, it was slightly higher than the number. So it, they had a slight of increase. Um, that's why, we didn't see a falling USD on Friday. We just see uh, a bit strong USD. But today, what we can what we can see here is that uh, most likely the currencies they want to push against the US dollar, so they want to uh, lift their prices higher. And we will see what it will happen. I don't usually trade within uh, a non-structured environment. So this one now, I'm gonna just wait for a break above this high point, or if it's gonna come somewhere here and it's gonna break below this lower point. So we're gonna have a new lower low. So I'm gonna look for a pullback and to go short and target these levels here. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Euro USD, similar behavior. If we go to the weekly charts, we see that we are coming from, uh, we stopped at this level of resistance actually. If we go down to the daily chart, the price make here a higher high. However, we said last week that we are around a very strong uh, resistance zone. So, we're gonna wait to see because Euro, it shows to be a bit uh, strong across the board. So we're gonna wait if we're gonna have a breakthrough and then we're gonna look for a pullback to go long target somewhere around this level for a first start. But of, here, of course the market has room to go up to here uh, if everything, it's gonna just go smooth, okay. Then, uh, if you go to the four hour chart, of course, it's a bit uh, messy here. Remember guys, we said about this trend line, uh, it's been broken here with a lower low. Now it's broken here with a higher high. So where are the buyers? Where are the sellers exactly positioning their, uh, their trades? It doesn't show us a very clear picture. Don't you agree? So we will wait for either a clear breakout or we wanna wait for price to break uh, below these lower lows here. So we're gonna just uh, trade accordingly. For now, I'm still stay on the sideline uh, with this pair. Now let's go to the Australian dollar. Remember we said that uh, tomorrow the Reserve Bank of Australia, they're gonna decide about their uh, interest rates. So, if they're going to increase the interest rate, most likely we're going to see a strong Australian dollar. Uh, if we go down to the four hour chart, it's going to be uh, maybe easier to take this trade. Okay, we have this trend line here, which we can see that 
the market, uh, we had a nice trade last week as we talk about that from this one, from this point here. Yeah. And now we have a higher high. Look at this high here and look at this high there. We said that this rejection of pin bar could create a bit of uh, opportunity for reversal traders in the market, which if some people, they took this trade, I didn't take it because that wasn't into my plan. So, but if some people took it, they had a good uh, two to one risk to reward, reward to risk ratio. So this area here, it's not a major, major resistance in the market. However, the, the tomorrow's outcome can lead to a break, a solid breakout, uh, most likely of this level here. So you can easily go up to here. Okay, if nothing changed in the market, you can then easily go up to here. Uh, so I don't know if some people, they're gonna position their self around this, this level here, really. I'm not gonna do it because of the, of the uh, tomorrow's, uh rba decision so i'm gonna just stay on the sidelines about that and wait for the outcome and then if it's gonna break we're gonna go down to the four hour or to the one hour chart and find our pullback and ready to go okay then usd jpy we saw on friday a lift higher to this pair here you see this bullish candle uh it's been influenced by the outcome uh, of the non-farm payroll event. So now we are around this resistance zone. Actually, it's a good, if you are trading divergence, if you plot your divergence on the chart, you will see that you had a minor divergence here, but now you have a major divergence. If you're gonna put your mug this, uh, you will you will see this phenomenon here now how can we play this uh this trade if we're going to have possible trade for me it's good enough to go down to the four hour chart let's zoom out a little bit we still have some uh room until these highs here okay there is still room so the price it's pulling back it left that rejection as you guys can see here, this rejection in the market, that was the last swing. So what can happen now? I don't know if it's gonna sell off right this, or if it's gonna, I believe it has a little bit of move to, to give here until it's gonna sell off, or if the USD is gonna get so much strength and the JPY is relatively weak as we know from the other pairs as well. So it's gonna be a good candidate uh, for a breakout as well. Depends how you want to play, but you can keep this on your uh, watch list. All right, now let's go to the pound yen. You see the rejection last Friday, this uh, pin bar here, this one here. Now the market, it's like in the Asian session, it tried to push lower. Now uh, in the opening, the European session, uh, if you go to the four hour, you will see that it's trying to push higher. It has a nice trend here for trend traders. This is a nice trend, all right? You have a higher high, higher high, higher high. You have your higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. Uh, for some people, I know that they are, some people I know they are in this trade here, uh, especially on the lower time frames. Better to just add the one hour chart. I don't know why it's not in here. Uh, so if we go down to the one hour chart, we will see this, we will see this bullish engulfing candle. The market tried to push, tried to push lower. That was about 50% retracement, which is very clear on the five minutes and 15 minutes. It's a, it's a nice pullback here. So you could enter here, you could have your stop here. So a tidy stop and you can target somewhere at this level, you have a nice two to one trade. Uh, sorry, these levels here, it's saver, which price it's almost there. So it's a two to one trade. 
if it's going to play out in, in our benefit, then it's going to be awesome. Okay. Then uh, let's go to the Euro again. Euro looks a bit strong across uh, the rest of the currencies. We have this trend line here, as you can see, which it made the lower low in the market and it broke below these lows, but now it made a lower high. Uh, it make, sorry, it makes a higher high, not a lower high. It broke above this resistance. It closed last Friday on this resistance. Oh. However, uh, I will say that this resistance here now is retesting it. If you can see, it's leaving a tail here. So we have to wait and see if it's going to be a clear, uh, a clear break. Uh, so we can start looking for longs, okay? And we take in consideration the fact that the euro is strong, the yen is weak, so it's a good candidate to keep an eye on that. Now, euro Canadian dollar, we have a double inside bar. It's one of my favorite price action. This one here, we have we are coming with a lower low, lower low, lower low. Then we have this candle. Then three on Thursday we have this inside bar. On Friday, we have uh, an insight into the inside bar. If you go to the four hour chart, you will see a triangle formation. So a break outside of this triangle formation usually leads to exceptional moves. However, we have to take in consideration the fact that we are around support and we are in a range, within a range, within a range the price behaves in my experience behaves a bit well a bit of randomness it shows a randomness uh, behavior so if i'm gonna look for something uh for this pair i will prefer to see price to come here and show a nice rejection with either a pin bar or this a bully this bullish engulfing this bullish engulfing which we talked about uh, this trade here last week, uh, or a, a, a rejection here. So if we're going to have the rejection, we're going to look for longs. If we're not going to have a rejection in the price, we'll just keep pushing higher. We can go to the four-hour chart. We will wait for this triangle to break higher we make a higher high pull back nice price action ready to go target around these areas here okay again this is what we expect to happen based on the the facts we have in front of us the price action we see right now tomorrow uh, an event in the market, maybe it's going to influence everything. It's going to create a turbulence in the market. So who knows what it will happen, okay? We make our plan based on the current market situation. Is it fair enough? Is it understandable from everyone? Yeah. Now, let's move on to the pound Canadian dollar. You can see here that Canadian dollar is behaving uh, with a bit of strength against the great British pound. We have this break below this uh, support. Now the market is pulling back and that's again, it's one of the trickiest uh, aspect of trading this one. Why? Because we do expect this downtrend to continue, right? We are on the four hour chart. So if we're gonna see a move up to here, which the price, it, it looks like it's coming there. If we're gonna see a move here and we're gonna see a rejection with a pin bar or a bearish engulfing candle, we can position ourselves to go short. But sometimes the price behaves a bit tricky and it just goes through, leaving this area here with a false breakout. So 
this one here on the daily chart can become a bullish engulfing, which you have a strong divergence. If you plot your MACD here, you're going to see a strong divergence here on your indicator. So how can you use it in your advantage? If you're going to have a bullish engulfing here at the end of the day, then you can look for longs. Okay, but on the four hour chart, if we're going to have something rejection here, but a strong price action rejection and strong price action rejections, it's the one they show massive shift in the momentum, which is the pin bars and the engulfing bars. All right. So we will wait and see what it will happen. I'm ready to play it in both sides, okay, equally, because uh, the Euro Canadian dollar, if the Euro is going to push higher, it means that the Euro is sitting on support. So the Canadian dollar is on resistance. So, uh, and if this one here, it's going to close higher and it's going to sit on the support, it means the Canadian dollar again on resistance. So it's uh, going to be a good candidate to look for longs in both currency pairs. Now, Euro Aussie. Tomorrow, we're going to have the RBA decision for their interest rates. Uh, on Thursday, if I recall, we're going to have the Central Bank of Europe uh, voting for their interest rates. Both currencies, they look a bit strong in the market right now. So if we're going to start positioning ourselves and taking trades around this area here, most likely we're going to find our trade to just shift around for a while until the market is going to decide which currency is stronger and which currency is weaker. I would prefer to stay on the sidelines with this pair because uh, of the interest rate decisions this uh, weekend. They are in very, very close days, both of them. So. Uh, it's pretty much, it's, it's nothing to do with this pair right now. Pound Australian dollar, this one can lead to, uh, to a break, to a breakthrough. Let me delete these arrows from here. Now, some things, some things can, can be changed around this pair. In general, pound, we see that it has a bit of weakness. But if tomorrow's uh, Reserve Bank of Australia will increase the interest rates and the expectation, uh, the reality will match the expectation. So maybe we're gonna see this pair come somewhere up to here. And if the market will follow through and it's gonna come strong, we can see a break below this, this support. Okay, I'm not saying that it's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I don't know what it's gonna happen, okay? I'm just, looking at the facts and uh, trying to find trading opportunities here. All right, guys. Now, uh, because we are around support zone, around the demand area, we can easily see this pair pushing higher as well. However, you have to, if you're gonna trade this pair, just make sure you manage your risk accordingly because of the tomorrow's events. Uh, it's a major event and we cannot just leave it uh, unnoticed. All right, guys. Gold, as we said last uh, Friday, gold is coming from this uh, nice downtrend. It found the support. We don't know if on the support here, there are sitting, uh, too many orders which they can stay and then they can scale into the market, the traders, so they can push the gold price higher. What we see now is that we are in this uh, uh, very, very tight range, which doesn't leave us with too much of room to, to participate in a, in a high probability trade. All right. Now, if you go down to the four hours, one hour chart, you can maybe find some good trading setups. However, as I told you on uh, Friday, 
when you have to trade within uh, this this range area, this tidy daily ranging area, uh, you must be a bit cautious about where you're going to place your stop so you are protected. If you're going to open a trade here, guys, let me just show you uh, this one here. Let's say you're going to open a trade here. You're going to enter here. Where are you going to put your stop? If you're going to put your stop up here on the last swing, what does this mean for you? To make one-to-one -one in this trade, you have to make this distance, which is how many pips? Let's measure the pips. Let's say you have, uh, what's written here, 26, let's say 26.4. To go down 26.4, 25, 26.4, you have to come around this level here, somewhere here. So that was the last swing low. If you're not going to take this in consideration, maybe there are many buying orders sitting here waiting to push the market higher. And it's very low probability trades, regardless of the outcome, maybe it's going to be an exceptional trade. However, in terms of probabilities, it's very low probability trade because you are trading within a small tight range of the higher time frame. And uh, I advise you to look with uh, concern the higher time frames. Okay, so you understand uh, where the big, what the, the big picture is. Uh, so WTI, we have this uptrend. Up, we have this uptrend here, as we discussed the last time, higher highs, higher highs, higher lows. This one here, it's also a trend line. It's a nice trend line. It's not a steep trend line, which is, can uh, show exhaustion in the market, but it's a nice trend line, this one here. However, at some point it accelerates, yeah. Uh, so if we go down to the four hour chart, we talk about this pin bar here, like a textbook example, a textbook trade, entry, stop, take profit somewhere here. It's almost 221, it wasn't a 221. Now the market is pulling back a little bit. Let's see what it's gonna happen next, but uh, it's more clear on the daily chart this pair, which you can see these swings here, yeah? So, do you guys have any questions? Uh, that's it for, usually Mondays are not, they don't have the best uh, trading setups. Uh, we have a handful of pairs to, to keep an eye on in our watch list. Uh, is the head and shoulders? Andre is asking, is it an, a head and shoulder on pound USD for hour? Let's go to have a look. Okay, head and shoulder, just for those I don't know, head and shoulder is when we have this higher high here, and then the market is unable to put a higher high on the right side. And then we say that this is the head, this is the right, the left shoulder and this is the right shoulder. This is the neckline. Uh, yes, you can consider this as a um, head and shoulder. However, Andre, and for everyone, there is a small trick in the head and shoulders where you're not going to find it in many, in many books. And I will tell you right now, if you see this this shoulder before it created from this swing here, if you see this swing equal or slightly higher to this swing here, uh, immediately you have to start questioning the validity of this, of this head and shoulder. Usually a powerful and very good head and shoulders are the one who uh, the neckline, it's uh, kind of decline a little bit at this point here. So it shows selling strength in the market, okay? However, saying that doesn't mean this is not a valley head and shoulder. I'm talking about the strength of the head and shoulder, okay? But yes, you can consider it as a head and shoulder, but remember to also keep an eye on the daily chart 
to see uh, if you are in an overall uh, downtrend. And if your analysis says that you are in an overall downtrend, you definitely go to your four hour, you find your catalyst, head and shoulders, double tops, engulfings, um, pin bars, whatever it is, you take the trade. And if this, if this level, it's gonna grow, if this level, it's gonna break below uh, this support here, so if the price is gonna break below the support here, we can definitely see uh, a little bit of um, trend trending mode, uh, and we can target these lower points here. Okay. Any questions, guys? So we will wrap for today. All good? Okay, great. Okay, guys, so I hope you gain a lot of value from this session. I wish you a happy trading. If you are intraday trader, remember that Euro today uh, in France, in Germany, the banks are closed. So maybe you want to experience low volatility, especially in the European session. Maybe things they're going to change when we going to kick up in the US session. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Uh, again, I wish you a happy trading and I will see you up for those you maybe didn't uh, got an email or you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, guys, I'll let you know that today, tonight at uh, six, um, six o'clock in the afternoon, I'm doing a very, very informative and good webinar about currency correlation in terms of how to look the pairs uh, as a as a basket, as I like to call it, like uh, a brief analysis I've done here about the Canadian dollar and the euro in general as a strength currency. Uh, you can uh, you can join to my webinar, and uh, I promise you you're gonna get a lot of value from that. Let me you want to have the link? Yeah, just give me a second. I will share the link to the webinar here. Give me one second, guys. Here. Okay. So here is the link for those you haven't subscribed yet. And I will share it also on uh, YouTube. Okay, all right guys. Again, have a great day and I will see you again tonight. Thank you so much.